What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Elite Cast. Uh, I'm Parker Rogers, and of course, as always, I am joined by Matt Rosington. <laughs> All right, Matt, let's get right into it. What do we got today? Right, so we have uh, a man that needs no introduction, one of the uh, more prominent faces of the uh, European American football. Yeah. It's the Caleb Leach, okay. the, the co CEO, uh, CEO, CEO of uh, Europe's Elite today with us on the podcast so uh yeah we just want to talk about like the, the start of Europe's Elite how we've become what we are today the number one uh brand in terms of marketing ourselves as a, a media brand in terms of American football in, in Europe at the under 19 level we've got our rankings we've got the uh, elite country pages we've done camps we've done everything so I wanted to know how we started and how we turned into what we are now Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, first and foremost, thanks for having me on, guys. Um, you guys gave me the nice, fancy introduction, but I actually admire all the stuff that you guys do for Europe's Elite. Matt and Parker constantly push me to make put Europe's Elite better. And it's like, hey, we need to come up with some new merchandise. We need to change up the way we're put, posting things on, on Instagram, on TikTok, or we need to update our top 150. And like, this is why. So Europe's Elite has become this big, massive thing because of individuals like Matt and Parker. And I'm forever grateful and excited to work with you guys and happy to be here. Very much appreciate it. So just jump, jumping, jumping straight in, like give us the rundown. How did the company start? Like when did it start? And then the vision, like what, like, what's uh, the story? Europe's Elite has gone through a number of evolutions. Uh, it originally started back in 2016 with an idea with a good friend of mine, Evan Harrington, to be a program that was going to go around Europe and coach other coaches. It was a group of American guys uh, with Evan and a few friends who were saying, hey, we're going to go around, we're going to meet some other coaches in the area, and we're going to coach them up to make their players better. And then that turned out not to be too scalable, right, uh, or not as desired. But there were a lot of young athletes who wanted more coaching. So I was like, all right, we'll just go around and we'll do small camps, and then we'll turn into this recruiting service. This is like 16 to 17. And then even towards 18, it was still this small recruiting service that wasn't truly scale, scalable and it wasn't truly what the vision of your fleet was meant to be. Uh, at the end of 18 is when I came along and uh, Evan and I had met somewhere and actually we met over Twitter, <laughs> met over Twitter. And I came to Evan and said, Hey, I got a lot of business development skills, man. I think we can turn this into something really, really big. That'll be a me uh, news and media source for youth athletes in Europe. Just giving these guys a space to share their stories, be highlighted, have a compare and contrast against other athletes in their country and outside of their country and know where they stand on the recruiting scale. We don't have to necessarily say, Hey, come pay me some money. We'll get you recruited to college. That's not what we're doing. We wanted to be this news source that says, Hey, you're balling out. You're playing American football in this other country. No, no one knows about you. This is going to be the platform to put you on the map. This is going to be the platform that says, this is this guy's story. He's playing football in Prague in the Czech Republic with the Prague Lions. shout out to the lions or playing up in Bristol with, with pride shout out to pride. Mm -hmm. And they have dreams to go play in the U.S. And we just want to share their stories and we're going to share their highlights. And we're going to connect them with coaches when they ask. But, like, we're not a service. We're just a news and media platform that has gotten really, really big. And it's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and you talk about the the bounds of connecting players to coaches. How has is, how is that gone, like, uh, oh as far as get, getting people in contact with other coaches, getting them to, to where they want to be and, you know, have, basically like having their dreams fulfilled of playing at a different level or playing in a different country? Man, so uh, I guess back in 2019, we were sitting down. At the beginning of 19, we are sitting down and we are saying, hey, we need to do a better job with our website and actually making sure these, these players are being connected directly with a, a reputable source or legitimate source of saying, these are my stats. Uh, this is who I am, coach. This is how you can find out more information about me. So we started making these player profiles and we started doing the player rankings and it has taken off. We started with uh, 300 or so profiles, Matt. Um, yeah. that, Cause Matt joined us around 2020, 2019. And we started with a small number and now we're about 3,200. So we've done that by 10. And these are legitimate profiles of players who are in Europe, Australia, some in West Africa, uh, some in North Africa. Like this is all international football. And these guys are saying, Hey, I want to play ball and I want to be seen. And the amount of guys, if you go on that website and just scroll through in the class of 22, 23, 21, who are committed to the big time division ones. Matter of fact, uh, Emric Kouamba from France, the lineman edge rusher just committed to Michigan yesterday. 
Uh, he's a top 23 prospect. Another guy, um, Thomas Collins, D lineman from Sweden, committed to Oregon State. Uh, who's big guy? Um, Lucas Simmons. Lucas Simmons, O lineman mm -hmm. who is also from Sweden, then went down to uh, Clearwater Academy, just committed to Florida State. So all of these athletes, are like, hey, this is their profile. We're going to share the news about them. No one else was just sharing the news about them in Europe. And here we are connecting these guys. And there'll be coaches hit, hit us up on Twitter and saying, hey, I want to see some more film. Or can I get this guy's email? Can I get his Twitter account? Uh, I, I just want to talk to this player. How can you help me? And we'll shoot the, the contact information over. Like, here you go. And let them have their own conversation. Yeah. yeah that's good. And that's something that, that a lot of people, you know, they don't, they don't necessarily understand. Like, yeah, we can – we're, we're a big brand. We have connections. Caleb, you have connections um, to a lot of different people. You know, it's like you say, your network is your net worth. That's, and that's what we're building, right? Yeah. We're building, building the, the, the biggest network that we can, and we're extending that out to, to you guys. So that's something that, that uh, we're you know, doing and you continue to, to grow with. Another thing that we've done before, I don't know when we'll see this again, uh, the level up camp. Uh, talk, talk a little bit about that. Yes. So unfortunately, we didn't feel comfortable running it in 2020 because of COVID. 2021 was the same thing. We didn't feel comfortable having that large of a gathering for a football camp. 2022, our logistics strategy just fell through. Um, we thought about doing a fall camp, but we're just going to wait till 23 and host three camps, actually. Uh, so that was a great time to ask that question. <laughs> At the moment, we are planning three level-up camps, uh, three three-day camps in different countries throughout Europe. Uh, the target right now is to be Switzerland and France. Another one's going to be in Copenhagen, Denmark. Um, the other one, just like the non, no, no, excuse me. It's right on the border of Switzerland and France. I'm forgetting the name of the city. I forgot, but that's one. And the third one, we're possibly thinking of Spain. So, yeah, we're planning. We got some big plans coming up. And then next year, on top of that, we're still going to run the college tour. We're still going to run a, uh, a number of one day camps. And we're also considering uh, partnering or affiliating ourselves with some other camps throughout Europe. So, Cause there are a lot of coaches who are doing a lot of great work. Europe's lead is not the only group of guys who have come together and say, Hey, we love football. And we know there's some people who are actually doing a good job coaching athletes up. We have no problem working with those people. So hopefully we're going to make some collaborations and continue to grow and, get more athletes on the website, give them these free profiles. All profiles are free. People think they pay for them. Everything is 100% <laughs> free. And all the work and the management on the profiles is done for free. It's a lot of work, but guys like Matt, it's, oh, you guys are killing it. Like, it's a lot of work, but it's, it's great. Yeah, and that's just, that's, just how it, that's just how it is. You know, we're building, we're building. Just continue to grow. Yeah, I mean, we've had a lot of opportunities as well because uh, I saw back in – uh, late 2018, early 2019. Yeah. And uh, the first time I met you was in Copenhagen in for the 77. And then the second time I met you was in the, the IPP in London. Yeah. And then met each in Vienna. So we've been connecting many different countries over the last couple of years. Oh, yeah. And uh, so that's one thing that we've kind of done with the Europe Elite is we've got availability in a bit and like... We've got people that work for us in all these different countries, like Evan and Daniel were in Italy, and then me, yep. you were in Austria, yeah. and then we had um, David, who was like surveying Germany, and then Park has obviously spent time in the Czech Republic, yeah. And then we've got people that, that are in like Holland and Spain and Belgium and Russia and all these. <laughs> so we just got people that are everywhere. We just got like a big. Guys, too. It's Ooh, yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So I guess just kind of you know, just looking forward, looking ahead, like, you know, we talked about like the different like events that we can expect, the different um, like camps and everything that we can expect. But moving forward as, as a brand and as a, as a company, Caleb, what can we expect from Europe's Elite as we, you know, continue to grow our platforms, continue to grow our following and uh, just continue to grow in our in our want and desire to, to help the youth? Absolutely. Uh, our goal and our mission is to be the top media outlet for youth sports in Europe. Right now, it's all focused on football. And the next five years, we'd like to get into basketball. But football is our baby. This is where we started, and this is where the shine is. Um, and we want to be affiliated and in conversation with other large media sites, such as 247 Sports, Rivals.com, Max Preps, that are in the States. But we don't want athletes to say, oh, I want to be seen on the U.S. website. 
our it's just our desire and our plan for this platform to get so large that athletes are coming at saying, hey, I'm committing this week. I'd love to use your website to announce my commitment. Or I would love to use your social media page to announce my commitment. And uh, we're, we're getting close to it. We're not far off. Actually, one of our top athletes or our top athlete for the class of 2023, Olus Allian, uh, he's predicted to announce his commitment July 22nd, I believe, Parker. I think it's July 22nd. He came out. I mean, we've been following him through – Pretty much through everything, you know, with his yeah. top ten, his his top six, his top five. I think now he's down to he's down to five. He's down to uh, Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia, Oregon, and uh, Miami. So we'll see where he ends up. July twenty second. Really looking forward to that. <laughs> That's wild. I don't I don't have a, a sure bet on where he's going, but I mean SEC football, SEC football. I'd love to see it. I'm, I'm just, where I'm gonna rest my case. That's that's my what would you call it a crystal ball prediction? Yeah, a crystal ball prediction. I'm going SEC. <laughs> so that's either Alabama or Georgia. I mean, you look you look at the past. You look at those two teams the past couple of years. I mean, they're both top echelon of SEC right there. SEC the obviously. Places to be. <laughs> SEC is obviously the the best um, the best conference in college football. I mean, obviously Alabama and Georgia are not the best schools. LSU is the best SEC school, but oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Should I have a college affiliation? It's one fine. Oh, but it's wow. just kind of crazy seeing the amount of Europeans we actually do have. Like five years ago, we didn't have as many as we do now. And I think five years in the future, we'll have even more than we do now. We've got people who are deciding between Alabama and Georgia. So, like, the sky is the limit for football. I mean, me and Parker just a minute ago were talking about, I heard about that, um, that finish tackle. Oh yeah, the guys like. Oh wait, I was talking about the other giant six foot five, three hundred and forty pound finish yeah. left tackle. So they've got players everywhere. People in Europe are really starting to see uh, football. When I was in Austria, it is amazing. The, the crowd was there. There was like sponsors there. So all these people um, come and support nineteen year old football. Let alone obviously the ELF of uh, being growing and expanding through Europe, and that just gives. You have to leave even more opportunities to cover the game, and to um, give possibly give players an opportunity in Europe if it's not in the states. It's like some people that may not go to the states on these camps and stuff. Maybe they want to stay home and stay in Europe. They still have that um, profile on our on our website that European teams are definitely going to be looking at. Absolutely. I mean, uh, to go back to when we first started with the profiles, 2019, Marcel Dabo was one of the first profiles we made as just this freak athlete from Stuttgart. He was this kid who clearly had the athleticism, the quickness, the strength, the speed, the power, the flexibility to do so many things on a football field. And he unfortunately didn't make it to the college level. That happens sometimes. Networking doesn't go down the way you want to. Might not have impressed that one coach who needed to see you, right? But now you, you go from 2019 to 2022, this guy is in the NFL due to the NFL International Pathway Program. Mm -hmm. which was amazing. Like, okay, kid, you didn't go college, but you still kept balling and doing your thing and said, I have a dream to play football at the highest level. Whose hand do I need to shake for someone to see me? And look at him now. He's in the NFL. Really, really happy for him. There's going to be yeah, some more on that roster, like uh, Junior Ajo from France. He's still playing at um, SMU, Southern Methodist. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Jeffrey Mamba, or Amba, uh, who is now Auburn University, one of our first profiles we made as well. He did two years at JUCO. Now he's back. And I would not be surprised to see him on an NFL roster in the next year or two. He was he was the, the biggest JUCO prospect this year, I believe. Yes. I mean, yeah, kid 6'6", 305 pounds, and was running like a 4'6", or 4'7", in his 40. Yes, he was the biggest <laughs> – Juco prospect in the world. And mm -hmm. he is originally from Congo and France. This is a bad man. And he was that good when he was younger, too. I remember when Bristol traveled to France and he was he was the him. We were talking about, oh, we got watch yeah. out for that, that giant one. He's got like 30 D1 offers. So, like, yeah, I mean, it's it's just time uh has passed the last couple of years. We're really starting to see the first players we put into that 150 list that are starting to make it into the leagues. Uh, or into the like, into the Auburns and the and the the Colts like with Marcel Dabo. So like, 
that first initial. I'd like to, I'd be interested to see like the top 150 list, the initial 150 list, and see where the players are at nowadays. Because now we've got a few players and a few of them are in ELF now. So it's uh, it's been a successful couple of years. We might have to do that of like, where are they now type deal. And um, mm. not everyone went to D1, not everyone went to the NFL, but some of them are having a great career in the ELF. Mm -hmm. the EFL or in the French League, the Spanish League, and some of them are really, really good football players. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It is. It is. I'm, I mean, I'm doing the uh, the breakdown of the under-19 championships at the moment, which I put a lot of time into, and I've only watched the first two groups. I've still got C to go, but uh, that's going to take about another 300 hours, so wait a little while on that one. But um, I would like in a few years, maybe next year, because the first initial 150 we did, a lot of my research was from the 2019 years, and obviously, that's now pa uh, the the 2022 ones now passed. And players like Marco Schneider, who you've obviously coached personally, yes, um, are now in the Raiders and in the LF team, and he's putting in some serious work. So, like, the Euros have really been a bit of a gateway open up to him, and now that the professional leagues and and are now starting to see Europe Euros this year, I think we've seen early glimpses of uh, some potential NFL, ELF, CFL, possibly, uh, stars. Absolutely. Uh, the, the Euros, the U19 tournament, always is a, is a place where we just notice athletes. This is the only chance you can say, hey, I'm on the national team and my country is better than yours. We're going to compete. We're going to play a full football game and see who's the best one. And some guys really stick out. Uh, unfortunately, some guys don't get to play in the national team tournament because of their high school schedule or their local club schedule, whatever it may be, something might have come up. But that tournament, the, the IFAP does a great job putting it together and allowing all these athletes to come to one ground and say, let's play some football, see who's the best one. <laughs> and that's, that's what's been missing for years of that hungry desire to compete that says, I'm stepping on the field, you're stepping on the field, and today I'm going to show you I'm better than you. And it's okay to get competitive and have that little dog in you, right? And we're using use Europe's elite to shed light on that. Those guys are saying, hey, I want to compete. Let's go at it. Exactly. Like, like Sandro was the was in New York Giants running back, just signed a new deal in the March time to stay with the Giants as well. So, like, he was there supporting. There was a Cardinals tight end, I think is also Austrian, yeah. uh, was there in the game too. So, like, it's got a draw. It's got... um literal NFL players coming to the games and presenting the trophies. And uh, cool. yeah, it's definitely a good thing. I think that the more that happens, the more time come through, I think more scouts will be attending. I mean, like, I'm not sure if there was, but there probably was uh, scouts attendance in the games for all of those games. Yeah, I'm not sure how many college scouts actually made it out. I do know some guys uh, at a few universities actually messaged us on Twitter. I won't put their name out there to be, just to keep their confidentiality, but they asked, like, hey, can we get a link to these games? They wanted to watch some players. Uh, I know that a lot of federations don't want those players to be recruited and taken from their home club. That's a whole different conversation, mm -hmm. and that's definitely not what we're trying to do. But if there's a player with a desire to play college football or go on to the next level with his game, and there's an actual coach, like a legitimate D-line coach at the University of X, saying, hey, I want to watch player Y who plays this position from that country, we will send them their link and watch the game and go from there. It's yeah. pretty fun. It's all, it's all about networking. It's all about uh, the connections that, that we have and just sharing those with you guys. So that's, that's, that's really you know, what we're all about here at Europe's elite. Uh, just, you know, bringing more, more light, as Caleb said, uh, shedding more light on you guys and just kind of being an outlet for you guys. Um, and we, we enjoy doing that. We really, really do. Uh, so Caleb, thanks for, thanks for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for sharing the story, the background, just, you know, giving us an insight, uh, to Europe's elite. Well, thanks for having me guys. Um, we got a lot more work to do. We're still growing. We're still hungry. Uh, I think we're at like 20,000 followers on IG. Our TikTok's starting to blow up. I know I'm still learning more and more about this TikTok stuff. Uh, <laughs> our Twitter account's growing and burning. Uh, I just want to give some shout outs to David Arming. He, he does a great job on our staff, helping with the data collection. Chris Stoneman, another guy who does a great job with social media and data collection. Uh, Daniel, as well, one of our new guys who just joined the team, does an amazing job with content, data collection, evaluation. Of course, my co-owner, Evan Harrington, um, Parker, Matt, 
Love you guys. Anton Bagan's another guy. Um, Decent from Italy is another guy. Uh, <laughs> but, but like we have a list of like 20 guys or, or 20 people who really say, Hey, I want to be a part of this and make this bigger. And it's only possible because of you guys. So thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks for joining us today, guys. I uh, really hope that y'all enjoyed this uh, this episode with our first ever guest on Elite Cast. Um, but with that being said, this is Parker Rogers signing off for today. Sit down. Bye bye.